This week we're wrapping up our study of the text of, uh, of Jeremiah, dealing with uh, chapters 46 through 52. Um, chapters 46 through 51 address the uh, so-called oracles against the foreign nations. Now several of the dif different prophecies have these oracles. Isaiah has them. Ezekiel has them. Amos has them. So several of the, uh, the other prophetic books also deal with the foreign nations and God's judgments and God's oracle against them. Um, one of the things that we learn from these foreign nation oracles is that God is sovereign. Uh, God is not only sovereign and in control over Judah and Jerusalem. He's also sovereign over all nations. And that's one thing that we can learn from these, uh, these oracles, that God is not dealing with those other nations by giving them a covenant as He had done with Judah and, and Israel. So He's dealing with them in a different way, but He's still over them. For example, Babylon comes in, destroys the city of Jerusalem, and takes many of the inhabitants of Jerusalem into exile. From the perspective of Babylon, Babylon thought it was in control. They thought they were the power and that Judah and Jerusalem were the pawns that they could do with as they pleased. What Jeremiah does in these oracles against the foreign nations, he puts God into the formula. And it changes the perspective. God is the one in, that's in control. Babylon is the pawn that God uses to judge His people. So it totally turns this idea of who is in control on its head. From the human perspective, Babylon looked like it's the power. From the divine perspective, God is always in control and Babylon is merely being used to accomplish God's purpose. That's one thing that we learn from the oracles against the foreign nations. Another interesting aspect of these foreign nation oracles is to ask the question, who is the audience? Now, Immediately we think, well, okay, the foreign nations are the audience. They're the ones hearing this. But that's, that's not right. There's no evidence that Egypt or Babylon or any of the other nations that were mentioned in these, in these oracles ever heard those oracles. They're addressing the foreign nations, but Judah is the audience. Judah is the one that is hearing it. So the message primarily is for Judah. It's for Judah's ears, not the ears of the foreign nations because they never heard them. Again, it shows, it drives home the point to those in Judah that God is using the other nations for His own purpose just as He is using Judah for His own purpose. God is always in control. The last chapter of the book has been termed uh, an historical appendix because it relates the material that is virtually duplicated in 2 Kings 24 and 25. Um, it relates the history of the end of that period. Chapter 52 ends with Jerusalem being destroyed, many of its inhabitants exiled, and ultimately <laughs> Jeremiah the prophet being sent down or taken down to Egypt by those who fled Jerusalem. It's not a pretty picture. It ends, uh, the book ends on a dissatisfying note but it drives home the point. Chapter 1 
said God is going to accomplish His purpose. Chapter 52 says God has accomplished that purpose and judgment has fallen. God is sovereign and God does what He says He will do. God bless you. Thank you.